Hi there, welcome to Peter Gorton at Home. And today it's great, I've teamed up with the guys at Fishes Lurdish on the See For Yourself campaign, which is all about promoting local fishermen and the quality of the British fish we have and eating more British fish. So, the dish I'm gonna show you today is monkfish. Now this monkfish which I've got here has been supplied by Trident Online Fresh Fish. Delicious monkfish, look at that, absolutely immaculate. Now, before I start cooking the monkfish, let me just explain a bit about monkfish. Monkfish is a very meaty fish. It lends itself cut into medallions like I've done here, which I'm gonna pan fry in a pan, or you can roast it in the oven. The thing to remember when you cook monkfish is make sure you remove the outer skin or better, get your um, fishmonger to remove it for you. Right, let's crack on with the dish. This is a lovely dish, really tasty and a little bit different. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a pea pancake filling first. So let me explain about the pea pancake and the filling. What I have here is I have, and you can come down here and I shall show you, I have some peas, precisely 225 grams of peas. I have three to four tablespoons of flour, self-raising. I have one whole egg. Also to that, I have some double cream. That is about 80 milliliters of double cream. What you do is you mix all that together. You can either mash it up or you can put it in a liquidizer entirely up to you. I have done it in a liquidizer and if I just quickly show you that, that's the texture you're looking for. And then I've cooked them in a pan with a little bit of oil and they're out like these look. Lovely, look at these beauties. And that's my base, which I'm gonna put my monkfish on afterwards. So let me just get rid of that for you before we start cooking. I'll just push that over there and then we'll start the cooking process. Excuse me, I'm back. <laughs> right, first things first is we need to make the sauce. Now I am gonna make a curry sauce to go with this. It's a really good curry sauce, very, very easy but absolutely delicious. And I'll give you all the ingredients now and we shall start cooking in a minute. Right, if you want to come down with me now into the pan here and I'll start showing what you need to do. First of all, a little bit of oil. About two tablespoons is all you need. Get that nice and hot. And then you want to add some garlic. Now it doesn't matter, how, you can add as much garlic as you like or as little, only up to you, and some fresh ginger. If you haven't got fresh ginger, you can use powdered ginger. Then add to that some shallots, all right? And if you haven't got shallots, you can use red onion. And let that sweat for about a minute. While that is sweating away, I'll tell you a little bit more about the other ingredients. Here I've got some curry powder. So I'm making this lovely coconut curry sauce. So it's just sweating that down. Now, if you come back up here, let me just explain. The reason why we sweat things down is to release that flavor. So now the onion, the garlic, the ginger, I can smell all that, which means it's gonna taste really, really good. So that's sweating for a minute now. We're now gonna add the curry powder. Now, again, it's very much, how much do you wanna put in? I'm putting in about one and a half tablespoons, but it's up to you. If you like more curry, put it in. Remember that recipes are really just guides. Now, we're very lucky really with this monkfish because monkfish is such a beautiful fish. And around, around the British Isles, we've got of over a hundred species of fish and shellfish. We're so lucky. Right, while that's sweating down, I am now gonna add my coconut milk. Now I want about half of the coconut milk, which is about 200 milliliters. And I'm gonna pour that in. And I'm just letting that cook down a bit. Give it a stir and just let it cook. Now, here I've got some passata or sieve tomatoes and I'm gonna add, that's about a hundred mils ratio. So we'll put that in. And just allow that to cook. It is as simple as that. While that is cooking, and I should pull up to the side, Put it on there. I am now going to put my pan on to cook my monkfish. So let me show you how to do the monkfish. 
monkfish there, a little bit of oil. Now you don't want to use loads of oil. And this is a very quick and easy dish to see. This is in real time. So you can see how quick and easy it is. A little bit of oil just to cover the pan. It's better when you're cooking fish really to use a non-stick pan. And then get that just fairly hot. So there's a bit of a sizzle on there when you put the monkfish in. Now, going, while that's heating up, let me tell you about how wonderful we are in Britain uh, with our fish and shellfish. We're so lucky. We've got wonderful mussels. We've got wonderful crab. We've got wonderful monkfish. Hake. We've even got some lovely cod. I mean, we're so, so lucky. And there's so many varieties I can go on forever. So go and check out your fishmonger. Ask them for fish and use your fishmonger as a guide because your fishmonger will tell you all about the fish. Don't be frightened to say what's in season. I do it all the time and I've been cooking for 38 years. Right, okay, pan is now hot, so follow me down and let me show you. Medallions and monkfish, right? What I'm doing is I'm just gonna place them in like that. And just go around, put them in. And just let them cook nicely. Now at this stage, I'm going to put a little bit of salt, just a tiny bit of salt, not too much. Uh, and we'll just let them cook for a bit. Don't be tempted to keep moving them around. When a lot, I see a lot of chefs cooking fish, they tend to want to move them all the time. Just let them cook a little bit. And you can see around the corner, see all that's going opaque around there. That means the cook fish is cooking nicely. And in a minute, I'll just flip them over to show you what they look like. Right there. Let's just flip them over. There you go, look. Look at that. This fish is so fresh. I've got to say another big thank you to Trident Fresh Fish Online for supplying this wonderful uh, monkfish. For me, I think Britain has the best fish in the world. And I urge you to support our fishermen as obviously they're having a hard time at the moment, as we all are. Right, so you can see that cooking gently. I've now turned it down because I just want it to cook really gently while my sauce next to me, and we'll just pan over to my sauce, is just cooking gently. And that's only been on for two minutes, and that is almost ready. That's how quick it is. So how do I finish my sauce? I like to put a little bit of soy. Now I only put in about a tablespoon in there. And I'm going to put a squeeze of lime because I love the flavour of lime. You can put lemon if you prefer. And I'll tell you what else works well in this is sweet chilli sauce if you want to put some in. And just let that cook. Squeeze of half a lime. Now my monk, now the monkfish is almost cooked and it's only been cooking for nearly enough a minute and a half. So two minutes is pretty much good. Right, to finish my curry sauce, I'm going to add some spring onions, which I've just sliced. I am going to add some fresh coriander, like that, and I'm just going to let that cook for a few seconds, probably about 30 seconds, that's all you need. Give it a good old stir, look at that. Right, now, I'm going to switch that off. My monkfish is now cooked, so I'll push that to the side and just let it finish in the pan. Now what I like to do sometimes, I like to put a bit of fresh butter in there and just let that just really gently, almost simmer into there and you get a nice flavour of the butter as well. Right, taste your sauce. Now it's very important when you cook your food that you always check it. And at this stage, I'm gonna have a little check just to make sure in case I need to add some more lime or lemon or chilli or whatever. Oh, that is delish. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plate up the dish. So come back over here with me, plate on there. I'm going to take my pea pancake, 
in the middle. Now the beauty of these pea pancakes, you can make them in advance, which is lovely. I'm now gonna put a little bit of curry sauce around the outside of that pea pancake. Take our time. Yeah, I wish you could actually smell this because the smell of that curry and the flavors is absolutely delicious. And having a pea pancake really is a bit of an alternative to having potatoes that, you know, just makes something a bit different. Now, what I tend to do is I put some stir fried veg on. Now I've stir fried this veg in advance but you can do whatever veg you want as a stir fry. And I'm gonna put some of that over there like that. Some of those beautiful beans, beautiful asparagus. But the star of the show, which is going on the top at the moment, is the monkfish. So you want that monkfish to shine. You don't want it to be overpowered by all those flavors. But monkfish, because as we said, it is a meaty fish. It can take a good amount of flavor and spices. Look at that, look at how beautiful that is. I can't, do you know what? I can't wait to eat it. Put it on there. Because I like a generous portion, I'm gonna pile up a bit extra for myself. Oh, oh, look at that, that is stunning. And I might put a little dribble on top. Oh man, 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 I'm getting excited. There we go. Okay, we're almost there. And last but not least, I'm gonna put a little bit of sprinkles on my micro, micro herbs, which I've got there, as this is an oriental inspired dish. And there you have it. Right, let's have a look. So if you come on up with me, and there you have the finished dish. We have pan fried medallions and monkfish with that beautiful monkfish. We have stir fried vegetables, we have a pea pancake, and we have a lovely coconut curry sauce. So all that's left for me to say is stay safe and happy cooking.